Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. And for those of you who are new here, if you could hit that subscribe button, I really would appreciate it. Right guys, so this video, I'm gonna go further over my thoughts of fishing in silt, why I like it, obviously my rigs, my baiting strategies, and basically cover anything else that I may have missed on my previous video. And when obviously coming to a silty venue, what I'm always looking for before I get set up is any signs of bubbles. Now, obviously this is a sure tell sign, obviously if fish are in your spot, with it being silty, obviously if the fish are feeding and it's going through the gills or if they're brushing up along the silt itself, obviously this brings up big plumes of bubbles. So that's often a telltale sign obviously the fish are there and to obviously go further over that at a silty venue obviously you will see a lot more bubbling um, often the case at venues where it's either clay sand gravel you won't really see much of this so again that's another telltale sign if you come into a venue you see lots of bubbling it is probably silty right, guys what you want to do next is ideally if you've got one grab your marker rod uh, with some braid on if not just grab one of your spare rods and just have a bare lead on and with that have a cast around if you get a firm crack down it's probably something like clay or gravel now if you cast out if it's silt you'll either get a very soft tap or you won't feel it at all and that would probably say that you're probably fishing over silt and obviously next thing you want to do with that after you've had a bit of a cast round drag it back gently bend it into the rod now if it starts to glide nicely almost immediately and continues to glide i'll be thinking it's softish low lying silt however if it plugs in real hard and you have to really bend the rod before it pulls out i'll be thinking it's that really deeper smelly choddier kind of leaf which you don't really want to be presenting a bait over now when it comes to rigs there's a few options but probably what most people will use will be a helicopter setup like what i've got now i've got a lead core on mine now if your water has got a lead core band there is plastic leaders or you can also have it just running straight onto your main line obviously with your no trace bead and your chod sleeve as well um, now with this you've got a few options again for the actual rig compartment itself now you can have a small chod rig that will sit just on top of the silt like what i've got here you can have a ronnie rig with a bit of a long boom so it'll gently drop on top of it or you can have a stiff hinge rig as well but they're the three major options as well that most people will use in this situation guys so when it comes to the bait preparation your baits can become tainted by the silt so usually what i do anything from 24 hours up to a week before my session is soak my boilies in a liquid or a glug that way you're maximizing attraction and obviously you're preventing a lot of the nasty smells of the silt soaking into your boilies Obviously, in this case, I've got my fruit and nut boilies by Parker Bates on the right, 14 and 18 mil. So I've glued them in the matching sauce. And on the left, I've got the OG Fish by Parker Bates, uh, 14 and 18 mil boilies. And I've chucked the matching sauce in with that as well. Obviously, again, maximizing attraction, preventing the smell of silt on your boilies. So hopefully, a carp comes along and bang! Nice bit of attraction there get your hook bait and weigh hopefully a 30 pounder
Right guys, you've got two major types of silt. You've got the leafier, choddier type, stuff like the leaves falling off the trees that go into the lake, obviously causing obviously this leaf debris. Obviously you've also got, in my case here, there's a lot of lily pads at this lake. So come autumn, obviously they'll start breaking down and start causing obviously this leafier debris. Also, weedy waters, come autumn time, that'll start dying off as well. So they're a couple of culprits that obviously cause, obviously, the build-up of silt also. There's also your smoother, finer, cleaner silt. Now, this can range from a couple of inches of silt above the lake substrate, or it can be your really gloopy, deep silt. So, obviously, with that also, be prepared to have a good mark and plumb it around and make sure your rig is presented above that properly. Right guys, now these are some of the fish I have had from this Silty Syndicate over the last year or so. Haven't done as many sessions as I wanted to, but yeah, by simply looking for the signs, I say the bubbling when you get to a Silty venue, these can be the kind of fish you can catch. Right guys, my right hand rod that was on them lily pads has rattled off, producing this probably, I don't know, probably £12, £13, give or take, OG fish, 15 mil bottom bait. Right guys, so for the spots that I've picked, for the right hand rod, I'm just under where these branches are, um, it's a little bit choddy, but there is pretty clear patches of low line silt as well, so I've put a white fruit and nut pop up over that and then my left hand rod is just in this groove of the pads it's really clear there there's like maybe a couple of inches of silt if that and that's on a monster crab um, natural beans wafter uh, the black variant so let's see what happens and i'll keep you updated it's not a game it's a red Right guys, after quite a slow day, it has been hard on the syndicate today. There hasn't been too many signs, but my right hand rod has finally gone off and it's a lovely, uh, I think it's one of the stockies from last year. Get a bit of water on it. Um, it's about 13 or 14 pound. A lot of them that got put in last year um, were low doubles. 10s, 11s, 12 pounders. So this fish, like I say, hasn't seen a hook before. Um, absolutely mint condition. There we go, guys. Lovely little, like I say, probably, I'm guessing around about 13 or 14 pound. There's no point in weighing it, but this is why I love silt fishing. Like I say, if you can, if you can get a sign, sign the fish are going to beat me up now if you can if you can find the bubbling it makes your life so much easier and you don't have to spam a load of bait in you can just literally go in with singles if you want and get fish like this and, and bigger if you check my previous how to fish in silt video you see i had the late record common from here the 20 i think it's 25 three at the time it was actually down down in weight because it was early on in the year um but yeah the lovely lovely little fish I'd say probably 13 or 14 pound there we go just quickly get a picture and then we'll chuck this one on and he goes nuts yeah i deserve that i deserve that for same picture <laughs> right there we go Right, let's get it back. Right guys, so when obviously dragging your lead back, if it's deep silt, it can lock up and it could take some force take some force basically to drag that lead out now what you're looking for is a firmer section of silt you don't want to be fishing in that really smelly stinking soft silt 
Now, when fishing over a hard lake bed, whether it be gravel, sand, clay, you can often, when you cast in, you'll feel like a crack when the lead hits the bottom. Now, often in silt, you'll either, it'll be very, very soft, or you won't even feel this at all. Right, also guys, obviously when bringing your lead back, give it a smell. Now, if it doesn't smell of anything, or it smells good, it's probably been over good silt, good fresh silt. Now, if you pull back, smell the lead and it absolutely stinks, that's the areas you want to avoid. That's probably your thick, gloopy, horrible minging silt. So stay away from those areas. Hi right, guys, so let's have a cast and see what the silt is like out there. First off, we'll go right near that little jetty thing there. There's a good marker. Pull back. You can see it's gliding fairly well. So that would say it's probably low lying silt, something maybe a couple of inches, maybe up to six inches deep, not the really deep gloopy horrible silt that you don't want to be fishing in. All right, let's try on the other side. Right, try there. Pulling back, gliding. Gliding again. Oh, a bit of gravel or something, it's knocking then. Oh, dragging, it's been tougher there. As you can see, I'm pulling back. Starting to get siltier, so you can see that's probably about 10 foot to the right of that little floating uh, boy over there. Let's see if we can get that again. Something around there. Nope. Oh, knocking. A bit of gravel out there, that could be a target. Uh, what we'll do, we'll go a bit to the left of it now. There we go. Drag that back. Clear, clear, clear. Oh, oh, that was a snag. That locked right up, so yeah, it could be under the ground room or anything, that one. But yeah, all that crystal clear. Very, very low line silt. We'll have one more cast to this side, and then I'll find a couple of spots. Here again, that's low line silt. Knock, 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 a bit of gravel. Like I say, when casting, when dragging back, if it is gliding, as I say, low line silt, probably a couple of inches to maybe four, four to six inches deep. If it locks up really tight, you're probably thinking it might be a foot or more. So if you are on a leader, you might want to push that bead right up if you are trying to fish over that. Right guys, I thought I'd do a quick outro now. As you've probably seen from a previous clip, the sun is starting to go down now. Uh, probably roughly about an hour or so of light. I probably am going to stay roughly till just about into darkness uh, to see if I can scrape another carp. But yeah, I thought I'd do my quick outro. If you have enjoyed this video, if you can give it a like, I really would appreciate it. And if you haven't already, if you could subscribe, I really would appreciate that also. It doesn't cost anything. Also, we're getting close to 1,500 subscribers now. And when we do, there is going to be a big bait giveaway where there is going to be multiple winners. So you definitely want to be a subscriber to be entered for that. Um, but yeah, if you do want to try Parker Baits also, and you haven't already, um, use my coupon code. It's all capitals, Stu, S-T-U, at parkerbaits.co.uk for 10% off your first order. And just a quick cheeky plug also, it was a white fruit and nut 12 mil pop-up that had that carp on just. It's my go-to pop-ups and colour and size out of our range, to be fair. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. 
I'll see you on the next video, unless I'm back again with another car. But if not, I'll see you on the next one.